Today's video, we are going to be looking at some new baits and some old baits that I'll be throwing this year, uh, but be forewarned, some of these baits may cause heavy breathing. Oh, you got him! Oh, you got him! Oh, got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> What's going on, everybody? My name's Brian, you're watching Angry Anarchy, and I want to go musky fishing, desperately. I am slated to go to Indiana very soon here, so fingers crossed the next video you see will not be me sitting down here talking about things, although I hope that has been enjoyable. Hopefully it will be on the water, and we'll be catching some beautiful Indiana muskies, fingers crossed. But what I wanted to do was take a look at some baits, as I said, some old, some new, and just talk about when I'm going to use them, what I'm looking forward to using them for, and that sort of thing. All right, let's start off with this guy. This lovely little number is called a Bowfin by Bam Bam Bates. Now, Bam Bam Bates is out of Pennsylvania. I believe that's where Brady is. Anyway, the gentleman's name is Brady Martz. I've known Brady for quite a while. I uh, met him first uh, out at the Pennsylvania Muskie Max show, and have known him ever since and we talk every now and again and he is making one of the hottest baits out there uh, it seems like every time i look on facebook people are just falling over themselves to get one of these guys this is the i don't know if he calls it the mini or the small one but this is the smaller version of the bowfin very interesting body style um i mean not really like any soft plastic bait that I've seen. You know, Medusa's a little bit shorter, squattier. Obviously has three tails. This is a, a double tail. But uh, people are just going absolutely bonkers over these things. So uh, I was lucky enough to get my hands on this little gray and white kind of Cisco looking one. Hopefully should be sort of just universal. Hopefully I will be able to use it anywhere that muskies swim. But uh, yeah, first and foremost, I am looking forward to throwing the Bowfin by Bam Bam Baits. All right, well, that's a new one. Let's look at something I first finally started using last year, and that is stuck to something else. That is the Baby Beaver. This is uh, kind of a bright little number, but should be perfect for the darker rivers that we uh, tend to find ourselves in. Now, when I've talked to Brian, the owner of Beaver, Beaver Baits, he basically said that rivers is what he fishes, and that is why this bait was developed. Nathan and I, fishing the Northern Wisconsin opener last year, did very well on this. Fishing it unweighted, now there is a little spot where you can put uh, a weight right there. But in a shallow river, I love fishing this thing unweighted. It's about as close to a fly as you're going to get without fly fishing. I know there are some castable flies out there. Uh, shout out to Munts uh, Baits. He's got some really cool castable flies, but th these baits just the way they kind of wiggle and squirm in the water is amazing and again talking to brian the owner of beaver baits when the fish hit these things i don't know if it's because they they don't know what they're getting themselves into but they hit the crap out of these things i mean rip the rod out of your hand type of hits nathan was fortunate enough to get his wisconsin pb at the time a 48 incher on this bait last year You're, up, you're on the net. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay. That's my personal best. Yeah, dude. That's my personal best. Yeah, dude. And I know uh, I got a nice fish on it, and it's it's an amazing bait to fish in the rivers, uh, giving the fish something they don't see that often. So the baby beaver is right up there with one of my favorites. Alrighty, next one, something new from Chaos Tackle. This is the little mini flap. They've got their regular Big Mama Psycho flap. This is the little guy. We used this a little bit last year on Eagle Lake. Uh, Trevor Allen from Chaos Tackle caught a nice fish on this. Oh, he's coming after it. 
There you go. There you go. There you go. That was neat. Okay. Dogging you. Cool, dude. That was cool to watch him go. Yeah. Yeah. But that was in a lake setting. I think where this little guy is going to really shine is again in the small rivers. I'm um, really looking forward to chucking this thing. I would assume we could get some smallies to hit this too, but uh, technically we're out there for muskies. So let's just hope a big muskie <laughs> comes up and eats this thing. Flap tails are underutilized as far as I'm concerned. Not many people throw them, myself included. I think having this on some smaller rivers is going to get us a couple of fish. Back to a bait that I have obviously used before and featured highly on this channel because it has my PB on it and the ridiculous footage at the front of me breathing heavily is my PB caught on this particular lure. Not this one. That one's saved. That one's <laughs> been put away. Uh, but the Lee Lures 8 inch pelagic swim, which I do have and I want to talk about this. I noticed that the fish really like to slash at this bait, a lot like a flap tail. You know, the flap tail, even the little one that I just had, has a little spreader bar to get the hooks away from the bait. So when the fish slashes at it, the first time I fished one of these, I believe I had five hits and I could not keep the fish pinned. Now, I'm not blaming that on the bait. Could have been the day, could have been me, I don't know. But adding this little piece of wire, and if you can see here, Hopefully you'll be able to see that well enough. The wire is just 51 thousandths wire, runs from the split ring through this back here, uh, through the, the other hook hanger, and then just kind of back and down a little bit. And just that little bit of a change, it makes all the difference in the world, as far as I'm concerned. It gives me the confidence to throw it. One thing I did do too, is to keep this from swinging back and forth and potentially catching this tail. I did just put a little zip tie right back here, if you can see that, and it keeps this from swinging too bad. So I know that's a mod that people will use on the shallow invader, and I would also say if, if you're having problems with that hook coming up and catching the tail, something like either a rubber band or uh, that zip tie on there to keep that hook from swinging might be the way to go. A new one from Chaos Tackle. The heavyweight crankbait. They came out with their heavyweight lineup of glide baits and now we've got sort of the same body style just in a nice heavy aluminum lipped crankbait. I'm looking forward to banging these suckers off rocks on Eagle Lake. I think this will be an amazing spring bait and I can't wait to use it as a casting bait. Also though for those of you that like to troll uh, Big Waters, Green Bay, Lake St. Clair, that sort of thing. I think these things are going to be amazing trolling baits. Uh, the little bit that I've used them, tossed them in a pool. I did have one last year that I played around with a little bit. These look amazing in the water. They do hunt, you know, like as they're coming back in, they, they do this a little bit. So I think these heavyweight cranks are going to be dynamite, whether you're casting them or trolling them. Another new one for me is a Ridgeway Customs 9-inch. You may have seen me use these with my buddy uh, Matt Bavrock out in Iowa, and the Ridgeway boys are from Iowa as well. They came out to the Wisconsin Muskie Expo, and they were hit out there. I was lucky enough to snag one of these, and I'm really looking forward to using these. They have a huge, wide wobble, run fairly shallow, and as I said, uh, Matt Bavrock, uh, if you're looking for any footage of fish being caught on these, he's got some. He gets a lot of nice Iowa fish on these Ridgeway custom baits. So, uh, new and improved. He went to a metal lip instead of the Lexan lips. So, looking forward to, again, possibly banging this off some rocks up in Canada. Uh, possibly throwing it in the weeds. We'll see. We'll just have to see what the fish are doing, because you never know. <laughs> so, but I am looking forward to using this 9-inch Ridgeway custom. This will be a fun one. Now, last, but certainly not least, I've got a whole bunch of Rusty's Custom Lures that I'm going to be throwing. 
the one that you've probably seen a lot of this is the seven inch fortune teller i use this a ton when uh colin schlicht and i were fishing late into the season i was having really good luck on this guy the glide that it has is nice and long side to side and when it almost looks like it stopped moving this little dangly blade on the back just keeps spinning and again i just made a video about putting dangly blades on the back of lures i will leave it linked up here do the fish care for it do they like it i i don't know but i know that i like it and if i like the way the bait looks i've said it a million times i'm gonna fish it that much more efficiently that much better i'm going to pay attention to it because confidence is key in musky fishing so get you some lures that you like throwing and you're going to catch fish on them the new part of this because i had let's see i had the six inch six sucker and the seven inch fortune teller we're gonna do a little roll reversal and go with the seven inch six sucker and the six inch fortune teller i'm gonna be throwing all these uh, especially when we're out in Indiana, Iowa at the end of the month. And then, I don't know, I've never really thrown glide baits on Eagle Lake that much, so I'm looking forward to tossing glide baits on Eagle. And then, of course, late into the season, but that's too far away to think about right now. we got to think spring. That's it. That's what I've got for baits that I'll be using this year. And I'm sure there will be others. Uh, but these are just some ones that I'm really excited about, wanted to tell you about. Hopefully, the next time you see me, I will be in a boat catching fish, God willing. <laughs> and even if it's not muskies, even if it's Lake Michigan and we're getting some lake trout or steelhead or the cohos are moving in, we are going to try to go out and finally get some fishing done. It has been far too long. We had really nice weather early this year, and I got out a couple times in the Milwaukee Harbor in January and February, and then since then I've just I've not been out in a boat. I take that back. We went to Ohio and the muskies kicked our butts. So other than that, that's been it. So soon we will have some fishing content. I appreciate every single one of you sticking with us and watching this stuff. And I will see you on the next video.